It's about that time of day again. My name is Joseph. Tuesday evening, July 17th. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter. My job is to help new traders earn consistent profits using a simple and reliable trading strategy. And my plan this evening is to identify the most reliable trading opportunities setting up for tomorrow's trading session. And tonight, I'm covering crude oil, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and euro. Starting off this evening, crude oil is bearish with a spike in range ahead of contract rollover and the weekly inventory report tomorrow. And that tells me to look for selling opportunities using buyer failures up above the range high tomorrow morning. The S&P is bullish with a spike in range pattern of its own. And that tells me to look for buying opportunities now, this time using seller failures down below the range tomorrow morning. NASDAQ also bullish, but not a spike in range. The NASDAQ has a spike in channel pattern tonight. And that tells me to look for buying opportunities using trap patterns down at the base of that channel tomorrow morning. Gold is bearish after a successful range breakout, but the strength of this move lower never gave the sellers an opportunity to sell high. So my plan is to look for that opportunity with a correction up in the battle zone tomorrow morning. And of course, the euro last up tonight is bearish with a strong move lower. And that tells me to look for selling opportunities using a high of a hidden channel tomorrow morning. Boy, we saw some big moves in today's session. Bunch of spikes to work with, and that means potentially measuring spikes going into tomorrow's trading session. So big moves today oftentimes result in big moves tomorrow. As always, I get a great newsletter in store for you guys and gals tonight. We get a ton of opportunities setting up for Wednesday's session. But before we get into charts tonight, I need to remind you, if you're watching me on YouTube this evening, you can find a detailed description of this entire strategy written out right here on my blog at sidewaysmarkets.com. I'll leave a link in the description of the YouTube video. Also, if you have any questions about anything covered in tonight's video, Please remember to post those questions in the comment section below. And if you like what you see, please help support this channel by subscribing and make sure you hit the bell icon so you get notified every time I publish another video. And if you really want to stay in tune with everything we do here at School of Trade, head over to sidewaysmarkets.com. This is where all the action happens every day, and make sure you join our mailing list. That's right, upper left-hand corner, all I need is your name and your email address, and I'll send you an email every time I publish something new. If you're hanging out on social media, stock Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever your favorite social media channel, I'm always posting exclusive content, charts, links, quotes, videos, all kinds of great stuff you guys will love. If you're hanging out on social, follow me in the lower left hand corner and speaking of charts how nice is this all the charts from tonight's video you could have them on your computer ready for tomorrow's trading day just grab those charts by following that link below the video tonight on our blog and speaking of tomorrow's session how about a free pass if you're not a member here at school of trade and you'd like to get a deep dive and actually see how this strategy works come out and grab that free pass and come join me as a guest tomorrow in the trade room and also don't forget Forget, you can post questions in the comment section below. You can pick up the phone and call me toll free in the office whenever you'd like. Or you can also, of course, hit me up on live support on the right hand side of the website. All right, guys, had a really good day today. We were expecting today to be a little bit sluggish, right? We talked about this last night, right? We had Jerome Powell speaking this morning at 10 a.m. And I'll tell you, man, that guy was cool, calm, collected like a cucumber, right, on the stand today. I, I, you, you would think in his previous life, right, he was some public speaker. I mean, the guy was really, you know, a, a very stark contrast, right, from, from watching Janet Yellen over the past few years. So a, kind of a... It was almost like the market said, I like this guy, right? A lot of markets rallied higher here, gold collapsing, euro collapsing, right? Equities collapsing. Uh, he did paint a pretty rosy picture, didn't he, right? Strong economy, growing jobs, right? Inflation within line. He kind of he kind of ticked all the boxes, right? He aggressively adjusted or aggressively uh, answered questions about uh, interest rates for the rest of the year. So doing a really good job at giving us some 
forward guidance, right? And then what that does is that helps smooth out a lot of the jitterness, right? The kind of the jitters um, in the financial markets, right? When when investors and traders alike, you know, institutions and individuals, when they don't know what's coming, they tend to get, you know, uh, cold feet, right? And they get they get nervous. He did a pretty good job today, I think, at calming a lot of the fears uh, in the market. I think you saw a lot of markets uh, that responded to that. Now. Bottom line, that is all kind of, uh, you know, it's all somewhat irrelevant. You know, we trade the chart. We don't trade the fundamentals behind this. But it was it was much better than we were expecting, right? I mean, look look back at the last time Janet Yellen spoke in front of the banking committee. I mean, it was just, it was a gridlock, right, on the charts. So very, very, uh, uh, it was a great, I was pleasantly surprised how long, right, we were to trade today. So tomorrow, oh, sorry, today, yeah, tomorrow, right, uh, I'm expecting this to be a lot easier, right? I wasn't expecting it to be uh, as smooth, right, as it as it was today. You know, we got a little bit of a slowdown between, you know, 1045 and 11 o'clock, but that was about it, right? It was a pretty full day today. So again, we got them tomorrow again. 10 o'clock tomorrow. Now, remember, tomorrow, it's going to be a lot of the same stuff. So there won't be as much of that kind of lingering, you know, what's he going to say next? He's pretty much addressed most of the main talking points that he had between 10 right, and 12 today. So tomorrow's probably going to be a bit of a repeat. There will still be live Q&A, and there will still be potential that he may put his foot in his mouth. But I'll tell you, after, after listening to him speak today, it's like the guy as a natural, so it sounds like we should be relatively right smooth sailing there tomorrow as well. Now, in addition to, of course, my boy Jerome speaking tomorrow morning, we got that housing starts number at 8:30. Remember, housing is a big, big concern right now, right? We've got a, a, a monstrous amount of, of total equity right in the housing market right now, and everybody's kind of teetering on mortgage applications dried up a few weeks. Will we start to see these housing? starts right start to dwindle as well always something right that we're keeping an eye on for the overall health right of the economy and then of course we're going to hear right later on in the morning from the inventory report that weekly inventory report at 10 30 eastern time tomorrow morning you know, the bottom line is housing starts will definitely be a good shot in the arm for us tomorrow morning right that'll be good for the markets tomorrow but make no mistake right that inventory report at 10 30 is going to be a big big problem for crude oil traders. So remember, if you trade in oil tomorrow, uh, tomorrow on oil is rollover day and it's inventory day. Now, we can complain about that all we want, but you, you know my opinion, right? Might as well rip the Band-Aid right off. Get it out of the way. Let's have rollover. Let's have inventories. Let's just call Wednesday tomorrow's probably going to be a pretty a pretty rough and tumble day for crude trading no matter what right rollover is always a little bit edgy because you're sharing volume right crude oil is one of those crude's one of those markets you can see it right now crude is one of those markets where it will share volume right right now you've got right that that 818 and the 918 they're basically dead even Crude's the only market that does that, right? All the other markets, they've got all their volume on one month and then bam, it just rolls over to the next month, right? There's very little of that overlap. Because crude oil rolls over every 30 days, there's that overlap. It's a, it's one of the bad, it's, it's, it's one of the only things that really is a drawback for oil, right? Is the rollover once a month. But the bottom line though is, is tomorrow could be a bit of a low volume environment because you've got rollover, which again, you're going to have a little bit of volume on the 818, a little bit of volume on the 918, right? I'm going to be trading the 918 tomorrow. I'll have that up for you tonight as well. And, and again, with the inventory, to report at 10 30 you know remember anytime we have a wednesday we always know it, it's pretty much 10 a.m you know it's pretty much 10 o'clock eastern time that's pretty much right your kind of cut off right on a wednesday for trading oil news comes out at 10 30 by 10 45 you should start to see right some some tradable price action again by 11 o'clock right we're back in the action again but be careful right be careful tomorrow with that rollover day and right with the petroleum status support that weekly right inventory number so housing starts tomorrow that's a good thing jerome powell at 10 o'clock 
meh, probably not gonna be that big of a deal, right? After seeing today. And then, right, petroleum status report, yeah, the record skips on that one. That's the big obstacle, right, for crude traders tomorrow. Because it's not just Wednesday's inventory, right? It's also that rollover, right, as well, right? All right, so let's let's keep going here. Looking at our charts here tonight, we got crude, S&P, NASDAQ, gold, and euro. So now notice I'm on the 918 contract right now on oil. There's just a little bit more volume right now on that 918 contract. So I went ahead and just just – assumed it was going to roll over so now this chart will be ready right for tomorrow so 918 we are rolled over and we are ready to go crude we're obviously bearish with a spike in range pattern this evening and that tells me to look for selling opportunities above the highs using the two try rule with a seller failure or look for successful breakout pullbacks right to new lower lows tomorrow morning and again remember tomorrow could be a bit of a perfect storm right rollover and inventory day so we may see it relatively slow tomorrow now I was wrong about I was wrong well, I was somewhat wrong about the Powell stuff today right so hopefully I'm wrong tomorrow right hopefully hopefully my concerns are no concerns at all you know who knows you know I, I know what you know right I just know we have two events tomorrow that usually when they come together they're probably going to be a little bit disruptive right of the market now most important thing right now is a spike in range right spike and range pattern now we got a couple of these here tonight so real quick anytime we see a spike pull back double bottom right remember double bottoms in a bear market that right that's a spike and range pattern okay now there are basically let's do this again there are basically two ways that I like to trade a spike and range Let's draw this up as a range right there. There are basically two spots to trade it, right? Above and below. Duh, right? Shocker, right? So how do I trade it above? Above, what I'm looking for is, I'm looking for what I call a failure pattern. And I'm going to use what I call the two-try rule. I'm going to look for the buyers to try to go up, right? That'll be one try, okay? I'm going to wait for those buyers to try to break out. Well, most breakouts fail, right? Liquid markets, most breakouts fail. Now, I don't have the confidence just to sell that breakout because a lot of times what happens is the breakout can be very strong. So what I'll do is I'll wait for it to pull back and try again. Now, at this point, I have one try for the buyers, now two try for the buyers. Once I see those buyers try a second time, and it will come back to the moving average, right? What will happen is it'll pull back to that moving average. The buyers now, right, they're trying to reverse this trend. Okay, they're trying to reverse this trend. And we'll talk about what we're going to do if it does reverse, right? If they do get that strength going higher here. What I'm looking for, though, is I want to see that one try, that two try. And then once I see them start to fail, I know where their stops are. Right. If I was a buyer, my stop would be right where the trade becomes invalid. Right. And that's where my entry is going to go right down. Right. As we slam back into that range. Now, sometimes this is very small. Right. Sometimes it's large. Right. Sometimes it goes one. Right. Two. And then we collapse back down. So you never quite know how large that two try rule is going to be. Again, what I call a two-try rule, right, and a buyer failure pattern, okay? So that's one way in which we can trade, right, a spike in range. Now, remember, it's a bear bias, right? It's a bear bias, right? So sell the high, back down we go with that two-try rule. The next option, okay, this is the tricky one. That was the easy one. This is the tricky one. As we try to break out lower, okay? Now, you might be thinking, well, well perfect. We can trade this breakout, right? Eh, maybe if this is a penny stock or if it was cryptocurrencies. In other words, if it was a, if it was an illiquid market, right? These are liquid markets, though. The futures markets, at least the ones that we trade here at School of Trade, right? Crude oil, gold, euro, e-minis. These are liquid, okay? Not penny stocks or, you know, illiquid markets, right? Like, uh, you know, silver or copper or natural gas, right? Those are illiquid markets. Those breakouts, you can mess with those if you want. I wouldn't recommend it still. But again, most breakouts are going to fail usually what happens is we break out of a range like this we're going to end up going right back into that range and you'll see some examples of that here tonight right on the newsletter what i'm looking for now is i want to see a strong enough breakout to get the moving average now to come down below that range this is very important because what i'm looking for next is is a two-legged pullback 
and I'm trying to use the underbelly of that range along with that moving average, right, as a resistance to be a seller. Now, why the two-legged pullback? Okay, there are a couple things you want to remember here, right? I want to see the moving average below it. I want to see that two-legged pullback. Why the two-legged pullback? Well, because what happens is, is when the buyers, right, when, when, when we try to break out of this range, the buyers are going to try to run this back into that range, right? Again, most breakouts fail. And that second leg going higher is going to be buyers. You're going to see a lot of buyers in that move. I'm looking now for those buyers, and I'm going to sell right into their stops, right, right at the low of that, right, that, that second leg. That's what I call the fake out, breakout, pullback, or the F-O-B-O-P-B, -B, right? I know it's a bit of an acronym there, but trust me, that's the most reliable way, right? You're going to want to trade that. From there, I can then look for a new channel, right? And then we'll look to sell off the high of that channel from there, right? Sometimes it even turns into a spike in channel below that low. So now, back to my chart now. I know that was a relatively long-winded explanation, but I got a couple of those tonight. And I want to make sure we had that covered ahead of time. So again, back to our crude chart here now I want to go up one try two try right failure back down right two try rule or I'm looking for that what was it again fake out breakout pullback pattern right all right fake out breakout pullback pattern right there you go okay so looking at this now I've got my trading range okay if I take that trading range if I project it higher I get resistance Okay, that would be ideal. Get it up, use that level of resistance, and sell off resistance. If I take that same trading range, right, and I project it lower, okay, that becomes support. But in all reality, that support, that first level of support, really isn't what I'm worried about. It's this level of support down here at 65.48. So if we get that strong, right, fake out, breakout, pullback, where's my initial target? You got it, 65.48. Got to really be careful trying to sell down around that 65.48 area, right? 65.50 area. What I'd rather do at that point is, is find myself a new channel, right? And sell off the high, right? Of that, of that channel at that point, right? Sell high instead of selling low. All right, guys. Now, how do we reverse? What does a reversal look like? Reversals are going to use what we call the one, two, three reversal right? One, two, three, reverse. Okay. Now very, very simple. Just like it sounds one, two, three reversal. Now the key here is it's going to be a strong move up. Hey, we just got a good strong move up, right? Like that real strong move up, right? Got to be a real strong move up. That strong move up is going to be strong enough. The reason why it has to be strong is it needs to be strong enough to give the buyers the guts to buy the pullback. It's got to pull back to the moving average. Okay, so if it doesn't pull back to the moving average, I can see this one doesn't exactly touch the moving average. So just to make sure I'm there, okay, got to pull back to the moving average. The reason why is because when it comes to two legged moves, the moving average is usually the difference between first leg and second leg. Okay, now once I have that, then let's draw a channel now. This is important, right? How do we trade this? Find that new, what we call a hidden channel. Find that hidden channel, draw off those two highs, right? Because that's really all you're going to get, right? You might be wondering, well, why not just draw a trend line like this? And why not just buy off that trend line? Absolutely, please do, right? If we get a strength pullback strength and it comes all the way back to that trend line, yes, yes, yes. The problem though is, is that most of the time, that channel is going to be steeper because when we reverse, right, it's, it's going to be a short covering rally, right? It's going to be sellers getting out and they're not going to wait around, right? So yes, I would love to get that deep pullback down to that trend line, right? But don't hold your breath, right? It's more, it's more probable, right, that we're going to get that pullback to the short term channel. Okay. And from there, right from there, now, of course, we got potential for a big, big run higher because remember we had that big collapse, right? Starting off right earlier on this, or should I say, yeah, earlier on this week, right? So we're going back up that 70 half area, right? If we can get the bulls in control. Okay. Remember strength, pullback strength. And by the way, tomorrow's rollover. Tomorrow is inventory day. Hell yeah. This could easily go reversing back to 70 tomorrow.
Now, guys, are you here for the first time today? Real quick here, if you're watching this newsletter right now for the first time today, um, I've used a lot of terminology so far that you may be unfamiliar with, right? Two try rule, buyer failures, fake out, breakout, pullback, one, two, three reversal, spike in channels, right? All these great terms. I want to make sure you get the most out of this nightly newsletter. I don't want these terms to go over your head here. So to give you a deeper dive, to really give you kind of a one-on-one -on -one lesson on how I do this, I'm going to put a free trading class in the upper right-hand corner. Pause the video, grab that free class, register on our website. All I need is your name and your email address, and I'll send you an email with a video link to watch a detailed description, a detailed, a very deep dive into the markets I trade, the patterns I use, right? Everything we do here in our trade room every day, right? Highly, highly, highly recommend if you're going to join me every evening on our newsletter. Highly recommend, right? There's a little, there's a little information icon in the upper right hand corner, right? Trust me, worth your time, right? Grab that free class, and I'll see you on the inside, right, of that of that free class. All right. In the meantime, though, let's keep going. How about some S&P? S&P is bullish with a spike in range pattern this evening which tells me to look for buying opportunities down below the low of the range using a seller failure pattern or, excuse me, buying opportunities up above the range with a successful breakout pullback, right, tomorrow morning. Now, this is why I addressed that earlier, right? You can see, same thing, strong move up, there's your pullback, there's your double top, okay? What does the double top tell you? That double top tells you you get a range, Okay, what does a range now tell me here, right? So there's my trading range. My range tells me we're bullish, right? We're bullish, no doubt about that, right? I want to come down one try, two try, buy the second try, right? Bears try once, bears try twice, right? Look to buy down below the low of that, right, of that trading range, okay? At the same time. Right at the same time, you'll also notice I'm drawing a trend line across those highs, ultimately from this high to that high. Okay, basically it's the high of the first move to the to the, to the highest high of the day. We then take that down, grind it up, and that creates what we call a hidden channel. Right, and that hidden channel would be fantastic if we could use that hidden channel right down at those lows. That would be wonderful. Right. As you can see, we have, we have what we call a double up here as well, right? This key level of resistance right now, right? Going to see a lot of these tonight, so make sure you pay attention. Anytime the market takes a nosedive to begin the day and then completely turns around with, in this case, a short covering rally, what I can do is I can take, you know, because you're not going to have a measured move to work with, right? When the market just screams higher like this, the reason why it's 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 racing higher, these are not buyers who are buying, these are sellers who are buying, right? They're sellers who are in from this previous move, right? So as the market goes higher here, these are not buyers buying. These are sellers who are probably listening to Fed right to the Fed Chair Powell today and his silky smooth delivery, right? And probably going Heck, I'm, I'm buying what this guy's selling, right? So, you know, all, all kidding aside, but that's what's happening, right? Those are, those are sellers getting out, and that's what causes that strong move. Well, that strong move, there's no pullback for me to use for a measured move. You guys know if you watch this newsletter every evening, you know I love measured moves. But if we get a straight line higher, what are you going to do? you got to find something. And usually, it's going to be the amount of the move down, project that up, right? And look where they stopped, right, at that double up. Now, the moral of the story is, right, if they're, if they're trying to go even higher tomorrow, where would the next target be? Huh, let's take that same double up, and why not? Yeah, triple it up. Why, why not, right? Double ups for everybody. Everybody's getting a double up, right? I'll get the Oprah going here tonight. So bottom line is we want to go lower, right? One try, two try, buy down at support, buy with that seller failure. Now, what if we go higher here? Okay, what if we go higher? Well, it's important to remember that this channel, right, this channel I have here is very much speculation at this point.
Okay, so in all reality, you could really just ditch that channel here for a second and just look at this as a spike in range. Because I don't want that, I don't want that trend line to intimidate me because in all reality it's got it's got it's not strong enough if we see what was it again that successful breakout pullback right strong move up how strong how strong strong enough to get the moving average up above that range right and then what one try two try right we call that what fake out breakout pullback right fake out breakout pullback as we pull back one leg two leg I know where their stops are. I know stops are sitting right here. I'm looking for buying opportunities, right, as we blow through those stops. Now, where's their target? Well, triple up, right? 28.25 is that triple up target. But oftentimes what happens is, is we see a spike in range pattern turn into another spike and maybe a spike in channel. You're going to see this in the NASDAQ in a few seconds here, right? So if we do end up spiking higher, one-legged pullback, right? Not a two-legged pullback. One-legged pullback into a new higher high. If you see that shallow pullback and another higher high, bingo. Now we know we have a spike in channel, and now we're looking to buy the low of that channel here. You can usually get a couple good buys. We usually call the rule of three, right? The rule of three, which means we've got one, two, three before we get that deep pullback, right, and look for a buy there, right? And that deep pullback will almost always come down to the base of that channel. We're going to talk more about that in a second here, guys, right? So spike and channel patterns. Now, spike and channel patterns happen, I would say most, I would say out of all the structural patterns, right, channels, ranges, uh, you know, spike and channels, spike and wedges, all these different patterns we talk about, I would say spike and channel pattern is by far the most common. It's the easiest to see, and boy, is it easy to trade. Okay, again, you want to learn more about spike and channel patterns. Grab that information icon in the upper right-hand corner, right? Grab that free course. You'll learn a lot more about those, and you'll see lots of examples of those as well in the free course as well. So with that, now we know the plan here as price goes higher. How do we reverse? Strength, pullback, strength, right? One, two, three, reversal. Okay, one, two, the reversal. Now remember, if we go, right, we see this all the time. We see strength all the time, right? But does it hold? No. Okay, so watch out for that strength pullback. No, right? And then back up, right, to retest that high, right? That's a great buying opportunity now, right, for those bulls, right? So what do we need for a, for a bear market? Strength, pullback, strength. Got to see that strong move going lower because what is that? Those are the buyers getting forced out of the market. That's why you have to have that strong second leg, right? Because that's the balloon getting popped, right, for the buyers. The buyers are going, no, we don't, and they're getting out of their positions, right? Covering or, or, or flattening their long positions, right, becoming sellers. Then we find that new bear channel. If we can, right, we'll draw off the highs here, right? That'll be resistance, right? Find the new channel, and we'll sell right off of that channel high. Again, if we can, we'll sell off that trend line, but just it's, it's, it's rare. We don't usually get that deep, deep pullback, right, that early in the game. Usually it's pretty, it's pretty aggressive as we go lower. All right, guys, so S&P is relatively easy there. Now, talk about the double, talk about double ups. Look at this. Look at this NASDAQ here. NASDAQ, boy, did they take this back in the opposite direction, right? 24 hours ago, we had just gotten a whoop in from those really disappointing Netflix releases, right? It's amazing how uh, a company that burns so much cash it's it's just it, it all it always amazes me how public companies you know like a like a Netflix or like an Uber you know people like it you know people love Uber I love who doesn't like Uber right who doesn't like Netflix but you look at their numbers you're like who would ever invest in a company like this I mean they're burning cash right it's like they're it's like forget the forget the uh, the, the the kerosene to keep the to keep the uh, the offices warm let's just toss on some Benjamins on there right that's all they're doing all day long is burning through cash. Great stuff. Love the, right? Anyways, 
I'll keep my I'll keep my opinions where they belong, and that is elsewhere, right? There's there's no need to, you know, we're not trading the company's financial statements, right? We're trading the actual chart. A chart is a chart is a chart, right? I love it when somebody says, "Buy," you know, think about the fundamentals, and I'm going, "What direction is this market going in?" It's bullish, so I'm buying, right? Until until we turn bearish. Right. You can you can try to sell a market based on fundamentals all you want and you're going to be fundamentally broke. Right. In a very short period of time. OK, let's keep going. Nasdaq. OK, Nasdaq is obviously bullish. Strong spike in channel pattern this afternoon. Spike in channel patterns, as we mentioned briefly on the S&P, that tells me to look for a deep pullback preferably down to the base of that channel. And I got my eyes on the low of this hidden channel for reliable support levels here. So the market's bullish. In a bull market, what's my plan? Buy at support where I have a big wide open space for a target. Okay, think about that. Think about it. Think about that again. In a bull market, right, I want to, I want to buy at support with what? With a big open space. Okay. Now I'll tell you right now. If there's one, if there's if there's one thing that can almost immediately change the trajectory of your career, right? If you're consistently losing either real money or demo dollars every day, if you just focus on this, right, on that rule, if the market's bullish, buy it support with a big wide open space for a target. See, the bigger the open space for the target the more people are going to be getting in with you on that trade. So for example, right? If I was to buy right here, am I buying at support with a big open space for a target? No, I'm buying at resistance, right? We had that move down, that move down was doubled up, right? Into a triple up, right? Now, maybe up to a quadruple up. Okay, now you can argue with me all you want and say, well, Joe, it, maybe it goes higher. You're right. Maybe it goes higher, right? Let's just agree that there's always potential, right? The price could keep going higher. But, his, but statistically speaking, okay, remember, we can't think in onesies, twosies. We have to think in the law of large numbers. If I was to buy at the high at resistance 100 times, how often, what, what do you think my probabilities would be? Maybe 45, 50%, right, if I'm lucky, okay? Not great. We can do better than that. If I was to, for example, wait for the price to pull back to a, a level of support, such as the low of a channel, right, down here, right? If I was to wait and buy down here now, now, am I buying at a level of support? Yes. And do I have a wide open space for a big target? Yes. That's going to be a much more reliable trade than trying to buy really anywhere else. Okay, and this is why successful traders know that while the market's rallying higher, they're waiting. They're waiting for what? That deep pullback. Why? Because now they can get in at a level of support with a clear line of sight back to a target. Right? Buying low, and we know the odds are very high. So we'll go back to retest that high and we can leave a runner right for the next leg from there. So remember, it's all about putting yourself in high probability situations in a bull market. Where can I find a level of support so I can buy with a big open space above? So if price goes lower, right? Spike and channel. What does a spike and channel tell me? We talked about this second ago on on the S&P, the rule of threes, right? One two, three, deep pullback. The reason why you look for a deep pullback on a spike in channel is because everyone's already long. That big spike higher, a lot of people probably jumped in on. If they didn't jump in there, they're buying the dips. Okay, by now, everybody should already be long or flat, right, getting out of the market. And what's the only way to attract more buyers after such a big move? A lower price. Right. That's the only way I'm going to get excited about this market right now. Right. It's a lower price. But but, 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 but but it might keep going higher. Right. You're right. It might. It might. Right. And it also might snow in Los Angeles on July 17th. 
right? You're certainly right. It could happen. The odds aren't as good though. And we want to put ourselves in high probability environments. So how do we get long down here, right? What are we thinking to get long down here? So anytime we get a steep pullback, right? And we should see a steep pullback. Anytime we see a steep pullback, what's going to happen is you're going to see those counter trend sellers. They're going to think this market's bearish, right? They'll be trading off those fast, fast time frames, suffering from this, what I call the scalper's curse. And that is the scalper's curse is what I suffered from early in my career, right? Where I'm trading on a 144 tick chart, right? I'm using moving average crosses and I'm just trade, 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 right? You know that, you know that, right? It's easy as a new trader to think that more trades are better, right? And how do you get more trades? A faster time frame. Yeah, the problem though is we quickly learn, most of us have learned at least, right? That when you do it that way, the only person that makes money is your broker. Yeah, you might have some good days here and there, probably probably just enough good days to keep you going, right? But not enough good days to really make a living off of it, right? So be very careful with that scalper's curse. The bottom line though is all the scalpers in the market, they're going to see this move and go, see, I told you we can't keep going up forever, guys. I'm going to sell this. Right, I'm calling the top right now, right? And so I put it out on Twitter and stock twist. I go, we'll see you back at 72.92, right? Bottom line is, all those sellers are now going to try to get in and reverse this trend, and they might be successful. But again, the odds are not in their right, are not in their favor. What is more, right? What is more in their favor is those bears try, right? They fail, and we end up slamming higher. Now, once we slam higher, now that gives me a chance now, right, to buy the pullback, right? I don't want to buy high. I want to buy low at support, okay? So, again, as we pull back, one try, two try. This is exactly the same technique that we use during a range-bound market, except this one is a counter trend, right? Bears try once. They pull back. They try to reverse that trend. We know where their stops are. One buying opportunity is easy into their stops. Okay, that usually when people get stopped out, when sellers get stopped out, they usually end up running higher, right? It's called a short covering rally. Okay, that's what made this market rally higher to begin with. I don't want to buy up here. I want to buy at support. Remember that, that simple rule. Where can I buy at support so I have a nice big open space for a target? Right? Add that rule to your repertoire, to your checklist, to your entry rules, whatever you use every day. And I can almost, I can almost guarantee if you follow that rule, you're going to be on the right side of the market more than you won't. Okay? Now, how do we go higher here? Right? How do we go high? Excuse me, hiccups. Okay? So now we know if price pulls back. And we also know that if it pulls back on strength, if it goes back to that moving average, right, and holds on strength, then yes, we do have a bear market. And yes, I do expect them to retest that low. And yes, I will be looking right for that reversal, but as, or, or looking for that sell off that high, right? And the target back down to that 72.93, right? I don't want to sound I don't want to sound uh, you know arrogant and say we're never going to go lower here because I'd be foolish to say so. Right. All I know right now is the market's bullish. I have no idea what tomorrow will bring. And anyone who tells you they do is either ignorant or naive. Right. And, and, you know, it's, it's naive. Right. Or they're lying to you. Nobody knows exactly what tomorrow will bring. I know right now the odds are on my side to be a buyer. Now, how do we go higher here? If we go higher here, not much is going to change. Right. So if we don't pull back, if we keep going higher here, we'll probably see it. Right. Continue inside that spike and channel. Right. Same thing. Deep pullback by the pullback. Okay, that's the plan. Now, I have to tell you, a lot of times these spike in channels, they'll go spike in channel into another spike in channel, right? Spike in channel into another spike in channel. So if we do break higher here, same thing, right? I'm looking for another spike in channel. I can buy, I can buy the low of that channel, but I always want to buy again that deep, deep pullback. And where's my target? Yep, you got it, up at that quadruple up. Now also watch out if we do run up to that quad up and start going sideways. Double top at that high, watch out for a trading range. One try, two try, failure, back up, right? Same basic principles as we discussed at the beginning of this video.
All right, guys? So really, really good example there of a double up. Again, the move down is the move up, up, and up, right? Don't buy here. Wait to buy low after we go higher or wait to buy low right on that pullback, right? Seller failure below the moving average to try rule. Relatively easy plan. Don't forget, you can always go back and watch this video again. All right, let's keep going. How about some gold? Gold is bearish. Yeah, just a, little, just, just, just a tad bearish after a successful breakout of yesterday's trading range. This strong move lower never pulled back to the moving average today. And that tells me there are most likely some sellers waiting patiently for an opportunity to sell as high as possible tomorrow morning. So my plan is to do just that. Stay patient and look for selling opportunities with a deep pullback. Hopefully up inside this battle zone, right? And of course, right up inside, right at the top of that of that channel. Now you'll notice on this on this gold, right? We've got basically here's what we know. There are really only two things that we actually know for sure right now. Everything else is really speculation. The first thing we know is that we're coming out of that trading range. If this market was to reverse on strength, pullback, strength, where are we going? We're trying to go back to that 1240.8, okay? That's what we know, okay? Black and white, we know, okay? What else do we know? We also know, no questions about this, we also know we had a strong move down that never, you can see, it never actually pulled back to the moving average. It got really close. And you know, moving averages are always difficult in hindsight. It's one of the biggest reasons why I tell my clients, never look back in time at a blank chart when you're, when you're back testing with a moving average. Because it's going to look like it hit it, but it doesn't. You know, moving averages, they're, they're tricky when you look back on that chart. If you, if you want to back test a strategy, use the replay function, right, in, in NinjaTrader. That's a much more effective way to do it if you're trying to use a moving average, all right? So second thing we know is we know that whole, pretty much the whole move down until about 1 o'clock this afternoon never tested the moving average. And the third thing we know, right, did I say two? I meant three. Strong move down. Higher lows, lower highs, moving average, flattening out, we're going sideways, right? That's a range. So we know we have a range above us. We know we have no pullback to the moving average at the very end of this move. And we know we have a range, right? A spike in range pattern here now, okay? So first of all, we talked about that original range, right? If we get the strength, pullback strength, find that channel, looked by the low of that channel, right? And we're trying to go back to that 1240.8, okay? The fact that we never touched the moving average until this afternoon, what does that tell you? It tells you that all the people who are waiting to buy, the, to, to sell that pullback, they're still waiting right now, right? They're still waiting. And so they're probably not gonna take it down here. Professional traders know not to chase after those moves. So I would assume there's a lot of traders up in this area right now that are feeling a little bit miffed, right, that they missed that opportunity. And if they get that opportunity, haven't used that word in a long time, right? <laughs> right, if they get that opportunity, sometimes I crack myself up, right? That's how, that's how you know how, how bad the jokes are getting on my head, right? Anyways, if they, if they get that opportunity, who uses the word miff anymore? Anyways, right, uh, if we get that opportunity, right, we're probably going to see a lot of sellers, right, up in that area. And then, of course, try to keep a straight face on this right now. Sorry about that, right? Strong move down, right, into a range. What's the plan? You got it. One try to try fail your back down or you got it fake out break out pull back pattern use that right use that moving average right sorry I flipped the colors on you there right use that moving average again that's why I talked about this earlier right that 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 uh, fake out break out pull back pattern right down to new lows right tomorrow I've also got this hidden channel i'm doing my best on that channel right now up at those highs that would be beautiful one try two try coming off that high that will be gorgeous right so those are some of the patterns i'm thinking about right here on gold tomorrow i'll tell you though i'd love to see us go back into that range because if we can get that reversal strength pullback strength 
this will be some easy money going higher here. You're going to have to get aggressive on it, right, with that hidden channel. But I'd love to see us go back to that range tomorrow. We'll see. You know, maybe we get it. Probably not, but who knows, right? We'll always keep an old mind on that. So that's my plan there on the gold, right, for tomorrow. And then last but not least tonight on the euro, I know I'm running late here. I'll keep this uh, short here on the euro. Euro is bearish with a strong move lower this afternoon. And with a, with a strong bear channel combined with a hidden channel, I'm looking for selling opportunities off resistance levels for a target going back down, right, to retest those lows. Here is, boy, what a... What a wild ride this euro has been over the past 72 hours. Uh, the bottom line, though, is we got we had a bull market, right? We had a bull market, and then we saw that strength pull back strength, and it turned to a bear market, right? Simple as that. So now we have that channel drawn out, right? There's our channel. We ran out of time today, right? Closing bell, right? Five o'clock. We ran out of time here today to sell the low, right, of that of that channel. So what we have right now is here we have a market now. Right with a with a very narrow and very steep channel, very narrow, very steep channel. Now I don't want to give away too much here because my clients will have pitchforks in their hands tomorrow morning in the trade room. Uh, but whenever I see a very narrow, very steep slope of a channel, we usually see the market pull back about halfway, right, for another leg lower. All right, guys. So again, the key here is, is that tight, right? Like a taiga, right? That nice, tight, narrow channel, right? That, that joke was not nearly as bad as the, as, as the myth comment, though. The bottom line, though, is tight, right? Narrow channel, steep slope to it, right? I want to see it go up and then come back down again, right? Now, don't hold me to halfway, okay? It could be 382. It could be 618, okay? We're looking for the move up right and down now how do i know where the best area would be to sell that i'm glad you asked let's draw out these two lows right low to low up to that high bingo right hidden channel that's where i'd like to see us now to sell off that high right now imagine now we run higher right little, little short covering rally some profit taking what's going to happen right we run higher we run higher. What's going to happen? The moving average comes over. The buyers are going to say, see, I told you we're going back up to that 18,000, right? Back to retest the high is the goal for the buyers. But the problem is the market's bearish. So the odds are much better for me now to sell into the stops of those buyers. That will result, right, in a liquidation, right, move lower. Don't sell it down there. Sell the pullback around that moving average. Right, so failure, strength, strength into pullback, pullback. Where's my target? I see you 16, right, 700. Okay, what is interesting here is is to see once again this little double up trick that we talked about. Right, whenever I see a market go up and then reverse, right, I like to use hidden channels to find my level of resistance. Very reliable there. Okay, and I like to take the amount of the move higher project it down surprise surprise we sat there at the closing bell one more lower huh what a coincidence right at that low so my objective for tomorrow is back to that 16700 right do we go up for a failure up for a failure come crashing back down or do we keep going lower what if the price goes lower, right? What if we keep grinding lower here? If we grind lower, this becomes a spike and channel. Nothing changes. I'm looking for that trap high, that move up, failure, strength pullback, and back down we go, right, to retest that low. So if we do keep going lower, that is not your excuse to start selling low. Remember, in a bear market, where can I sell at resistance with a big 
open space, right? See what I did right there? I flipped it on you, right? In a bull market, buy at support with a big open space. In a bear market, sell at resistance, right? With a big open space. All right, you got it. That's going to, but what that will do is that will increase your odds significantly because you're going to be participating with a larger group of people, right? And that larger group of people, that's what trading is all about. That's why moving averages work, right? That's why this stuff works. That's why technical analysis works, right? The more people that are watching this, right, the more better for your results. All right. Speaking about your results, hopefully you had a great day today, and we're going to have a great day tomorrow. Don't forget, 8 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow in our trade room. Hope to see you there with all of our clients. I got a great free trial on the homepage here at School of Trade. I'll shoot you an invite to come out and join me on a free pass to our trade room. I'll give you a deep dive into our trading strategy. I think it's the best in the business, but I might be a little bit partial to that as well, right? We got beginner, intermediate, and advanced classes, right? If you love my newsletter, you're going to love being a client. If you got any questions, I've got live support on the right-hand side of the website. And right next to my ugly mug is a good email, telephone, and Skype to use right to contact the office. Guys and gals, thank you so much for spending your the last uh, almost an hour here with me. I know it goes by fast. I put a lot of effort into my newsletter every evening, Monday through Thursday. It means a lot to me that you appreciate it. So be well out there. Be nice to each other, will you? And be here tomorrow, right? If not tomorrow morning, same time, same place, right tomorrow afternoon. My name is Joseph, guys. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye.